looking at the soils, looking at what the climate's likely to be like in 2080 to identify species that are suitable under those warmer and slightly drier climatic conditions. The area was confirmed as infected with Phytophthora remorum, so we received a legal felling notice and had to fell all of the larch. So after notification of disease on this site, the next stage is to write an operational site plan. You know, what are the things that we need to be aware of? So for example, power lines, heritage, conservation issues, this site is quite a large clear fell for the Forest of Dean, so 20 hectares of clearance. But in the context of the whole forest, of over 10,000 hectares, it's actually only a very small area. So what it provides is actually a different habitat for ground nesting birds and other opportunities for species that like an open setting. The majority of the wildlife that would be prone to disturbance can readily disperse into adjacent woodland, of which it's very extensive around here. It also has obviously a landscape impact, which can be negative, but equally on this particular site, it's actually opened up a view that wouldn't have been seen for over 40 years. The harvesting process has become much more mechanized over the last 30 years, using purpose-built machines that can fell, delimb, cross-cut the tree in literally 30 seconds or so per tree and then it's extracted with a purpose-built forward which is an eight-wheel drive machine with a timber crane and a bunk on the back. The timber is extracted to roadside and then dispatched on a lorry to various mills. We leave deadwood standing whenever it's safe to do so on our clear fowls because it serves two purposes. It's a valuable habitat in its own right but it's also a raptor perch, so birds of prey will use them as a sighting post to hunt for voles and, and other small mammals on the site. What we term as brash is all the branch wood on trees, so side branches on conifers and broad leaves. The product that is not wanted by the mills, but actually forms quite an important deadwood habitat and also it's the, the recycling of nutrients on the site and those those side branches will all rot down over time and return the nutrients to the soil to be taken up by the next stand of trees. A fundamental part of the restocking process is preparing the ground and we try to do that in as low impact a way as possible. We use brush raking because it works very well and it's just essentially about being able to get access to the soil with a spade. Our forests at the establishment phase face a multitude of challenges. Most people will be familiar with the impact of deer. They're nice to see around the forest, but they will browse most of our broadleaf species off. But also our conifers are increasingly, in the Forest of Dean, we're at a stage where every significant restock will be fenced with deer fencing and rabbit netting to keep deer and boar out for at least 10 years. The main positives from this clear fell is that it gives us a clean slate to be able to put a much wider range of species onto this site, which will make it much more resilient against pests and diseases and also climate change in future. But it's not just about the different species, it's also the structural diversity that will come from different species and different growth rates, just as a way to increase the complexity of planting on this site. It will include both native broadleaves and a native conifer, which climatically should grow well. So Scots pine, but also quite a bit of wild service, hornbeam, beech, and we're actually going to be trying some Italian alder on this site. Really, our only defence is to have a, a wide range of species on this site so that the next disease that comes along would only impact on a small proportion of them, and the rest will hopefully be immune to that particular disease.